Hello friend, welcome back to Toyota Maintenance YouTube channel. And I have another successful repair to share with you on this channel. So here you are looking on 2005 Toyota Tundra with that V8 4.7 liter iForce engine. And what happened with this truck? So apparently the owner was driving and suddenly, bang, the whole truck stopped working. She had to pull over to the side of the road. She couldn't start anymore the truck and it was towed to my shop. So the tow company left it outside. When I got to the work, I checked it outside and sure enough, the lights were kind of dim and the car was not starting. The truck was not starting. So obviously the first thing, right, if it's not really powerful, is check the battery. The battery was not really strong. The voltage was barely 12 volts. So I did really good charging. And with the fully charged battery, I was hoping, right, that will be the easiest, something happened, maybe alternator stopped working. That will be actually a cool option. So I hopped inside, put the ignition on, all the lights, everything was working, right, the windows, everything will be working, but no start. So let me show you the look on the dashboard, right, when I put a key in. And observe what's happening. I heard some click outside, right? But these are the lights which you can see and this is what's happening. When I turn the key, there's nothing, absolutely nothing. And obviously, what's the first thing you gotta do? You gotta do check your fuses, right? So, you have the fuse boxes right here one, two, three, this is the main, right, where are the most important fuses, I will say in this case, for engine management, right? I'm not looking for fuses for power windows or anything, right? But just to show you the last location of the fuses in this vehicle, it's important to know for everybody, right? Whoever owns this, it's right here. So if you move this cover, there's another fuse area and you have to check all the fuses, obviously. So obviously I continued in the engine bay with that largest area where I have uh, most fuses, right? And it's right here. And when I kept popping them out, checking them out, I found out that this one was burned. And here you can see the lid which was covering it, right? And nicely, you can see there is a sticker. And if you compare the locations, you will find out that this fuse, it's in this EFI number one, electronic fuel injection number one. It's a 20 amp fuse. So I have removed the fuse, right, with the pliers. Once again, I could see that it's burnt. Let me show you. It's that little burnt smoke, right? And you can see it's interrupted. I took a new, there was the same rating, 20 amp, right? I take, I took it, borrow it from here. These are the spare. There was a 15, 20 and 30. I put the brand new 20, which you see burnt right now, but it was brand new. I placed it inside and hoping for easy fix, right? I went into the vehicle, I put the ignition on, turn it to the starter, nothing happened, absolutely identical the situation. And also the second fuse was immediately burned. So now I have two burnt fuses and this is telling me something. 
And all of us, I bet you, who work on the cars in this moment say, probably out loud, oh crap, I have a short circuit in the wiring harness and that might be absolute nightmare to diagnose that. Now, why it could be very problematic diagnosis? First of all, there are many ways how to diagnose this problem. That's a number one, right? There are different tools. You can use the voltmeters. You can use all kinds of tools, specialized tools for that. So that's one thing. But basically what the short circuit means, what the fact that these fuses are blown immediately, right? Without any hesitation, what it means. It means that the wiring harness, which is supplying some, we call it consumers, right? Let's say it's computer or let's say it's a lights that carries basically electricity for that uh, part of the electric system in your vehicle, right? You can see the wires right there, right? So they are carrying electricity for these systems. Now these fuses are here to protect that system in the case there is something wrong happening. And short means that one of the wires which you see down there somewhere within the car most likely lost its insulation it rubbed on something like I'm showing here imagine this was a rubbing by vibration on that bolt which is part of the negative right the entire vehicle chassis this entire frame is a negative you can see it even connected right here directly to the body right so if the wire which carries positive wrapped through that insulation and started touching this ground right here that will create excessive flow of the electricity right the amps will go really high and that's why it blows that fuse immediately sorry for that long speech but i just wanted to make sure you kind of understand what i'm talking about here and what needs to be done in the case of diagnosis in this case now, what was good for me, I knew that EFI number one fuse, it's being blown immediately, right? When you put an ignition on, bang, it just immediately blows. I also found something in the vehicle, which uh, on the purpose I didn't show you, and I was hoping you saw it too. Let me show you inside in the cabin. When you do diagnosis with these problems, you have to watch for absolutely everything. And I want to show you something which I didn't mention on purpose. Here is the key. And in this case, with this problem, when you put a key on, try to look for the check engine light. Where is it? Do you see it? It actually is supposed to be right here. And when you turn the key on in beginning, right, it's supposed to show up and then when you start up, it goes off. But as you can see, the check engine light is gone. And the check engine light should be there if you have all connection to the computer. If the computer, the ECM is working correctly and it immediately shows us that it's not. Would you like to confirm that? Well, that's very easy. Grab your scanner find the OBD connector which is right here underneath the dashboard and connect to it. Try to connect to it because when you put the key on, ignition will be on, you will get clearly only one answer. There's no communication with the computer. And that already show us direction where I need to go with this troubleshooting, right? Apparently that EFI-1, that fuse, is somehow related to the computer and electronics in this vehicle for the engine management, right? As I said, all the windows and fan and everything's working perfectly, there's no problem. Most of electric here, it's perfect, but the engine doesn't wanna start 
crank, nothing, right? It's completely dead. No communication with the computer through the OBD2 either. We have no check engine light in the dashboard. So what's the next step? Now I need look on the electric wiring diagrams where that fuse, what it's supplying. Fortunately, I have original, right, factory manuals, which are extremely important in this case. And if you look in the book, you try to find that EFI number one. You look on the engine management and engine control. Here we go. 20 amp EFI number one. And here you can start seeing what it is supplying. So it's EFI relay. There is a closed open relay. There is fuel pump relay. So that's a many things. But mainly these are going on different page. Right? Look at this black and red wire, right? That's definitely when the EFI relay switches, right? This is going to the computer. Here you can see ECM, right? It looks like a huge chaos probably to most of you, but this is extremely important information for this troubleshooting. So once again, what am I looking for? I'm looking for a wire, most likely, right? I'm hoping it's one of the most common problems which we find. Oh, that's funny, walking backwards and talking. Anyway, most common is one of the wires lost the insulation and it's rubbing on the body of the truck, right? We know there is a bunch of wires running to the ECM. Where is ECM? So some of you probably know, it's behind the glove box, also that wiring book, right? That clearly shows you where is what located. So definitely it says, hey, it's behind the glove box and that's where you need to go. So let's go look here what I have found. And I'm using this camcorder because it can focus better on very small things. And I also set up the whole scene so I can finally film it for you. All of this took a while, you, you know, this troubleshooting and everything wasn't easy. But I will say I lucked out here because to find the wire which lost its insulation, it's touching. It could be a really long process, but here we go. I would love to show you what I found. Remove the glove box, remove the only one piece of plastic, right? With Here was the sensor, so I disconnected this wire and look what I immediately, what immediately caught my attention. First of all, you see the computer here, right? One, two, three, four, five electrical connectors to this computer, the ECM. But now I already practiced that zooming on it for you. This took a while, as I said, so you are welcome. Do you see that black spot right here on this extremely sharp piece of steel? I'm touching it like this and that will not cut me, but I bet you if I did this movement, it will cut my finger. It's really, really sharp. Do you see this black spot there? I will still try to do a better close-up, but it might lose the focus. Do you see that? That's the place where the wire, which I just mentioned in electric wiring diagram. Do you see this wire? That's a black and red wire. Yeah, sorry for that, but that's all I can do here. It's not much space, but do you see how it's touching right here? Right now I'm pushing it on it, right? I found a whole harness touching this edge like this. And look right there. There, where do you see that stripe on that wire, which is colored, mm, yeah, the gray right up there? Let me move this. Do you see that stripe right here? There is a hole through the insulation, and that wire, if I turn it, I'm trying for you, 
maybe right now, you can actually see and right here where is that gray part that was touching right here that edge of that steel and it was shortening itself on the frame of the vehicle as we discussed before. That was creating sparking here, right? It's all black, burnt, and that needs to be repaired. I will so I repair the insulation of that red and black wire and I created approximately six layers of a thick Gorilla tape on this sharp edge, right, of that computer holder. So it's absolutely impossible that anything can get cut or get in contact with this steel bracket. So now if I grab another 20 amp fuse and I will put it in its place, am I going to get the check engine light in the dashboard and am I going to be able to start the vehicle? Hopefully the computer, the ECU is good. Let's go and see if it's possible. So here are the fuses. The color seems to be identical. Yellow is again for the 20 amp when you look here. So let's take this. Here are these two old ones, right, which I burned. I didn't want to continue doing that. Here we go. 20 amp fuse right here. Let's go in the vehicle and see if our situation improved. That's a big crossing fingers, don't you think? Do you see the check engine light? So the repair of that red and black wire brought us check engine light back, right? The computer is again in communication with everything. I bet you if I put a scanner it will communicate with OBD2. Now the moment of the true. Do you think it will start? Let's see. Wow! And here we go my friend. This was very lucky repair. I spent a bunch of time on it. Don't think that this just happened in a few minutes, right? But wow! I'm relieved. I'm very thankful. I don't consider myself genius or whatever. I'm very thankful that that damage on that wire was so quickly visible and so perfectly accessible for repair. I'm completely relieved. The owners are working actually behind the corner. I should run there right now and tell them that it's fixed. The computer or some expensive parts were not damaged, right? And everything's fine. Wow, I'm really, really happy. So here you got it, my friend. Another great video, repair video on this channel about Toyotas, right? And if you want to see more in the future, please make sure you are subscribed because I will always film more for you on this channel soon. Thank you for watching and have a great day, my friend.